Smell that? It's time for a swing dance reaction video. No. 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 Yeah! Greetings and salutations. Welcome to Street Smart Swing. My name is Jamin Jackson, also known as the Galactic Swing Dance Umpire. <laughs> and I am super elated to be scrutinizing another Lindy Hop video for you today. But first, make sure you subscribe and headbutt that notification button so you never miss a Swing Dance reaction video ever again. Folks, I gotta tell you, this is gonna be a pretty exciting Jack and Jill competition. We are going to move your bottom 2020. This is the master level, so it should be really Really good and entertaining. Let's hope. Do not let your hearts be troubled, folks. I'm going to tell you the absolute truth about who I feel are the winners of this competition. So if you are someone who gets triggered by the truth, this is not the place for you. Let's go. This is going to be good. Should be the most aggressive dancing, or should I say passive aggressive dancing, you will probably ever see. I love this format. Okay, so far I can't tell who this is. Okay, let's see. We're off to a start. Clearly know how to dance. Uh, but so far I'm a, I can't watch anymore. I feel like I'm watching another dancer. Uh, it's derivative. I'm not gonna ignore them, nor am I gonna score them low because they can clearly dance, but I'm not inspired. I just, it's making me mad. All right, who's next? Who we got? Okay. A little bit more syncopations. Uh, okay, so this, uh, this is, I think this is Felipe, it looks like it. And I'm not sure who this follower is. Okay, I like what I'm seeing so far. There's a little bit more rhythmic diversity and the stylistic cues are not as homogenous. So we have, for me, our first competitor. Let's see who this is, come on. Okay, at least they're trying something different. I like that. Uh, I'm seeing some personality. Okay, even made that look like it was intentional. I love that. Okay, good timing. See, some people love to judge high because people break away and do solo. I'm not one of those kind of judges. I want to see what you can do with your partner. I like to see solo if something goes wrong and they make it look natural. That must be the move of the competition. Everybody's into this, this get up thing. Come on. Woo! Trumpet player, I feel you. Okay, who is this? <laughs> there it is again! <laughs> I 
I don't blame him. I, I think whenever you're doing a competition and you're waiting, you kind of get inspired by whatever people are doing. Or it could be, like I said, that passive aggressive nature to say, hey, look, I can do it too, buddy. <coughs> All right. Okay, so a couple kind of redeemed themselves on the second one. They did something a little different, but tonally wise, I feel like it's just derivative. Okay, I felt like that that second that round was a little similar to the first round. I didn't see anything new, so that I feel like kind of take it away a little bit. Just a little bit. Okay, you have my attention. Trying something different. There we go. And she healed. Ah, uh, okay. Okay. I like them, as you can tell. For a compliment sandwich. Let's talk. Boy, oh boy, folks. Uh, I tell you what, I'm impressed by so far. When I looked at this uh, description on this video, it said masters. And what was really exciting was to see that I didn't see hardly any familiar faces. That is wonderful. I got to tell you, that is wonderful to see new people who have already already been elevated in uh, the social construct of master level. And I'm going to tell you, technically speaking, yes, that is really impressive. I like that. That tells me we got hungry people. We got a lot of growth. We got hungry folks who want to say something. I might not I might walk that last statement back because I'm not sure if everybody really 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 wants to say something. I think they may want to say something on the surface where hey, I'm a good dancer. Hey, look at what I'm doing. Hey, you might want to learn from me. I get that. Everybody has that. That's the entry point. We all have a little bit of ego that gets us into uh, the interest of working hard and going through the maturation process of learning Lindy Hop. But that doesn't necessarily keep us in. There is a genuine love for the art that at some point in that process, something is birthed out of that love that is extremely original, that blesses us all and generations for, uh, to come. And not everybody's there. That's the small 1%. I doubt it's even 1%. Uh, 
But those are the ones artistically who impact us all. And I'm going to tell you, not everybody's there. Not everybody's there. Some people say they're there, but we'll see. We'll see. Now, let me tell you the stuff I hated about this. You guys know me. Lindy Hop is easy. I said it. It's easy. Because what's hard about Lindy Hop is not the technique. What's hard is understanding what the technique is and then going through the process of being able to apply it. And most people in this competition understood the technique. I will, I will go ahead and say everybody could do the technique. If you can do the technique, no matter how you look doing it, you've mastered the technique. How you look doing it is preferential. It's simply my opinion. It's simply your opinion if you might like the shapes or not. But if you can do a swing out and some of the more traditional classic moves, you've mastered Lindy Hop. The problem is, is how do we judge competitions like this when everyone is kind of doing the same thing? I felt that the thing that is so small is in this competition, the performance on everybody, the, what they've been doing was elevated as if it's the main thing. I'm going to do the same move they did, but I'm going to do it more technically proficient. I'm going to do the exact same shape they did, but I'm going to spin it just a little bit. Everything was kind of safe. I'd say four couples. No, three, three couples. Let me be fair. There are about three couples that literally did the exact same shapes at certain points in the music. A lot of that is because you're watching people, like I mentioned, and you just kind of get inspired by that. A lot of it is just because we're safe. And we're scared to be ourselves and to really put our ideas out there so that we can all appreciate you. I didn't see, I only saw two individuals. Barely. I saw a lot of clones, but I didn't see that many people 100% being an original. And that's hard to do because people will argue and say, Jamin, no one's an original. Everything is kind of brought... You know, everything is derived from something else. Exactly. It, you're right. That, but that is the 25% that I say is the, the, the beginning point. It's where we start. If you can do that part, the hard part is being yourself and doing something we haven't seen before, introducing another way of doing this. Guys, I'm a firm believer. The musicians had it right. They understood. You play swing music. And then they battled it out. Who can have a better sound within the construct of swing music? Who could have a better style? Who could introduce a new instrument without violating the foundation? They were always adding stuff onto it. But you know what happened as soon as they said, you know what? Lindy Hop is too pop. You know what? It's, it's too mainstream. Let's do our own thing. And the music changed. People stopped playing swing music, right? They started to play music for themselves instead of for the band, working together for the audience so people can react to it in a way that includes us all. They started to play for themselves. And guess what? They changed something at the expense of the foundation. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about keeping the foundation there and adding a tremendous amount of value. And I did not see that. I saw a bunch of clones. And it just hurts my heart because I'm not saying they're bad dancers. I'm saying some people are just simply not being honest with themselves. They're terrified to just try something new and to, to be themselves. Even if what they, what they are at that moment in time isn't 100% clear and polished, that's good. That's part of the Lindy Hop story. That's how the music evolved. That's how some of Louis Armstrong's best songs were written. So keep that in mind. I saw a lot of that. Now let me get into my top three. Because we got to round this off on a positive note. You know that. Here's what I liked. Uh, my third place uh, couple clearly had the control uh, like everybody else. But what I liked, they were, the, they were the first couple that did something that was distinct enough for me to say, okay, we're, we're going we're gonna to eat something different. <laughs> 
We're not all just going to sit here and keep eating marshmallows. We're going. I'm going to have a piece of chicken, something different, finally, right? And this couple, uh, they did it at the point. Uh, I can't remember where the point was. They were doing some things that were kind of homogenous, but they broke out and they started to do something different. And I paid attention to it. It was the first thing I could remember. She was wearing red, like a red shirt. I think it was like a black skirt. He had a white shirt on, glasses, blue, uh, white shoes, gray pants. Um, I loved them. I loved them. I got a chance to kind of feel his personality particularly because he initiated that change and they kind of just went in a circle, you know, just kind of did this thing. And then they just got back and started dancing again. I, I like when people break the mold a little bit. So that it's not just trying to be different, but it really is a genuine expression of somewhat that some something about their personality that normally we wouldn't see if they just kept doing everything everybody else was doing. I saw a glimpse of them in this one. I liked her. Uh, I liked what I really liked about her. She had like this uh, lightness to her dancing. It, she seemed very, very light and it's like eating sushi. You know, when I eat sushi, I feel clean afterwards. It's not the same when I eat Indian food. I'm like happy and miserable. I'm full. I'm, <laughs> I've done way too much. I've been all over my, over my head. When I eat sushi, it's super clean. And I just feel like, yeah, give me more of that. I'm never really full. I kind of keep desiring more. And, and when I watched her, it kind of gave me that feeling. It kind of gave me that feeling. And, and I think really... It was a good match with him because he, he was a little quirky in certain parts, doing different things. And I like when there is a contrast in personality when people are dancing. We're not just seeing one vanilla thing where they look the same. So they were my third place, clearly. Third place for me. Uh, my favorite move that they did was that turning. They did a little turning thing together. That stood out the most. I wanted to yell, but I was still too angry about some of the stuff I saw that was just the similar, same thing. Uh, my second place. Uh, second place for me goes to, I would have to say, she was wearing tan and like black dots. And I think that, it, no, that's not, that's not them. Yeah, she was wearing tan uh, and he was wearing blue. And I think that may have been Felipe. My screen is a little blurry, so I can't tell all the way. But I really liked her energy. I liked how they moved together uh, rhythmically. Yes, they were doing some shapes that kind of remind me of other dancers, but I can tell there were moments he was adding some like tap phrasing in there, pulling his partner in and trying some footwork where it said, of course, I got some ideas, but I'm going to place it in the exact spot where you can remember it. And he did that. Did some basic social dancing with his partner. She was responding. She was on point. Didn't look like she was over delayed where she was struggling. She was responding to those syncopations without fret. Like there was there was nothing I saw that she did that said, okay, I'm uncomfortable. I'm scared. She just kind of went right with it, did some swiveling and kept going. Um, for me, I like that. I like that. You guys already know how I feel about his dancing. I think uh, he's at a point where it's polished. He's kind of gone through the maturation process, kind of figure out what you like about the dance, what you don't like. And once you get to that apex, that's when you really start to shoot off into different areas of what you want to focus on as a dancer. You have the motif of nice, smooth, polished movement. He, I'm assuming he likes that because that's what he keeps doing. And yet he's adding still some energy because when I watch his dancing, I see energy. I see syncopations. And I see now, because of the maturity, I see a little bit of restraint, which ultimately makes it look more polished. And I appreciate that. I can literally see where his family tree for dance comes from, but it isn't too derivative where it's annoying, where I just go, you know what, just, just dye your hair blonde, wear the same shoes, do the same thing. I'm, it's not to that point. That's why I appreciate his dancing. I can't say that for a lot of the other people. So, uh, my first place couple, folks. This was a surprise to me because they were kind of like the silent giants. I don't think his face was very expressive. I don't think he did a whole lot of smiling. Or if he did, I couldn't see it all the way. Uh, yeah, he was just a little bit more reserved. And what I liked is the fact because he was reserved, 
I learned about his partner more. She had some cool, fancy, like, slide moments. Like, uh, there were, like, these hiccup moments with her feet. And their first, their first set seemed very reserved and conservative in terms of style. Um, and I didn't like it at first. But then when I saw the second set, I thought, okay, um, I got it. They did some cool move at the end that changed it up for me. It caught me by surprise. I think it was toward the end of the video. Coming in, and she did, he did a swing out, and she did like this jump hit and paused. That made me go, okay, this leader knows who he is. He's cool. He's willing to serve his partner. But visually speaking, he's wanting to make his partner more highlighted. And I got to see, in my opinion, the best dancer of the competition. For me, when I watched this particular competition, she was my favorite. She was my favorite. Let me see who it was. I don't know her name. Uh, yeah, she had like blue and like uh, flowers on. Uh, yeah, they. Yeah, that's her. I really liked how she emphasized the music um, with the sync of patience. Yeah, it wasn't too cluttered. It wasn't just too busy. They were the silent giant killers for me. So I put them in first because not only they could do the timing, they had... Of course, the the control, everybody had that. But what I liked is that the timing that she put in made me appreciate them as a unit more. And it drew more attention to him. I got to see, oh, wow, this leader is a little bit more self-contained. He's not rushed. He's willing to just lead some swing outs, set his partner up, and set up a pattern for the audience to kind of expect something to repeat. And then they did something different. That is... For me, that's the, the creative element that was missing in a lot of this competition, that thing I haven't seen before. Sometimes that's replaced by another quality. It could be doing something we've seen before a different way. It could be premature maturity. When I look at this level, I go, that's master, master level. When a leader can restrain themselves, move with their partner and say, I'm going to stay in my lane doing this. When I can do all this other stuff and not do it, but yet not make that the point. Because he was only highlighted because of what she was doing, in my opinion. She added all of the syncopations in there and it made me appreciate them as a unit. So there you go, folks. That's my top three. I That's who I liked upon first viewing. Uh, what did you think? Who did you think was the best couple for you? Who was the best dancer for you? I told you my favorite dancer was the girl and she had like the flowers on. It was like uh, blue. Uh, yeah, it was like reddish, pinkish flowers. She was great. I liked her sink of patience. She had blue pants. My favorite lead, I would probably have to say, was Felipe in this one. I would say, too, he probably has a little bit more experience than a lot of these dancers. So I kind of should expect that. But aside from him... Uh, my favorite lead was the lead that had the red on, the couple. So that's why they win for me is because it was unexpected. When you're competing against other people who've been in the game for a while, hey, you can hang and you can do what you did and I can see some distinction just a little bit and it's not as homogenous as everybody else. That's noteworthy. So let me know what you guys thought about this in the comment section. If you guys are wanting to get to the master level quickly, Guys, I started teaching internationally within my first year of social dancing. Well, people are like, well, Jamin, you were already prefer a professional dancer. Well, of course I was a professional dancer. I'd never done any partner dancing, though. I never understood Lindy High. I didn't know you could dance to Olive Garden music. All I knew was just, you listen to this music in the elevator. Uh, it's not choreographed? What, what do you mean? I didn't understand that. So when I came in, you know the, the advantage that I had as a professional dancer? You know the number one advantage? Patience. I had to learn. I had to sit there and be patient, be patient and go through the process of a brand new dancer again. Like when I first started dancing at 11 years old, I started at 30 training to do this professionally. I had to go through that process as if I was a little kid, and that takes a tremendous amount of patience. Because I know things take time, I wasn't rushed, frustrated with the process. 
So that helped me accelerate the learning curve, right? The frustration for me is that there wasn't a clear method on how to get there. I had to just keep taking classes, keep taking classes, keep taking classes, go to more workshops, do different things, take more private lessons, hear conflicting ideas, people not telling me what's subjective or objective. I had to filter all of that out and kind of pinpoint what it is after a tremendous uh, investment of time. I spent over 10,000 hours doing this uh, just to figure out what's really objective and what isn't. And if it isn't objective, should we do it? Yeah, if it's respectable, if someone else created it, we should still do it. But if it isn't, then what is objective so that I can add my uh, unique subjective style on top of it to make a difference in this art form? So I went through that process, folks, and I put together Fundamentals Membership. Many of our students all across the world are taking advantage of this. It's rapidly changing their dancing. They're not having to wait five, six years to get good. You can come in in months and then within a year be on a whole different level to where you totally understand not just how to do it, but how to teach it to a brand new mind so that they can get better faster than you. That was my desire. So take a check out my Fundamentals Membership if you are interested in that type of of transformation. If you guys want inspiration, I'm telling you, uh, you need to check out my free courses. I got over 25 free courses. Um, they're available for you so you can get a taste of what it's like being in our community online. I got a home studio right next door. I'm filming stuff all the time. We post new content every Monday and Tuesday to keep you guys inspired. And for many of the dancers, they're able to post what they're working on so I can give them personal critique. Just like I'm giving you guys my input on this, I'd love to help you individually. So check that out if you guys want the inspiration and uh, the opportunity to see what it's like to be a part of our Street Smart Swing community. So with that said, folks, I had a good time with this Masters one. My compliment sandwich was a light one. Didn't have a whole lot of meat on the inside. Didn't, but I'm still satiated. I will tell you that. And a uh, big shout out to Red and Flowers. That's my number one couple. <laughs> so if I don't see you guys' comments below, hopefully I get a chance to see you in one of my classes online. Take care.